my name's Mark McKenzie. Welcome to my video. I get a lot of questions. Being a guitar tutor, I get a lot of questions about how to hold a pick, how to play with a pick. And more importantly, hey, why should I play with a pick? I've been playing for how many years now without a pick and everything seems okay. Well, the main reason I like people to play and use a pick and to be able to use a pick properly or a plectrum is um, for the percussive things that you can get from a guitar. I'll give you an example. If you don't use a pick, I'll do one without a pick now. I'm just going to use my fingers for a little bit. Just playing the same tune I was just playing earlier. Not a lot of action comes out of that. If you listen to the difference now. You can hear a lot of difference already. That's one reason. Another one's accuracy. Um, if I want to play individual strings. And play accurately. It's really easy to do when you're holding a pick. Without a pick, it's a little bit. Or if you're doing finger style, it's okay. There's a lot more involved with finger style. So it's one another reason to use a pick. Another one's speed. You can get a lot of speed with down up strokes using a pick. Um, and the technique is it lends itself to that percussiveness, which is the slapping style that we use. Um, if you play with a pick already and you're not holding a pick correctly. A lot of people hold it like a pen, and they end up with this sort of style of looks like a bit of a crane, some sort of bird crane thing, and their hand is way out from the guitar. And it might sound okay, but it limits you because you can't do a lot of the stuff with the palm of the hand. The palm of the hand is actually where a lot of the effects come out of the guitar, and the percussiveness it treats this whole area like a drum, and that's where you can get that. A lot of that funkiness comes out of using the palm and it's hard to watch that because when you watch a guitar player play, I know I'm guilty of this, when you look at a guitar player playing you're usually looking at his left hand, the hand that's playing on the fretboard because it's doing all these cool things, when in actual fact a lot of the cool stuff is happening in the right hand. The right hand is actually where it's all at. It's to do with the way they're strumming, the rhythm, the feel of the strings, on and off the strings, this sort of, that sort of funky stuff that I was doing. A lot of that comes from the right hand. And the dynamics, which is the volume changes, the, the fact that you can just play. Uh, now I haven't turned anything down, it's exactly the same, but there's hardly anything happening now. I'm just holding the pick really lightly and keeping it really, really dampened with my right hand. And then I can get nice and heaps of volume of light just by releasing that. So a lot of different things you can do there with a pick. Um, plus the sound, you can get a few more sounds out of the guitar get these high frequencies out of the guitar with a pick. The high frequencies come because we've got a hard edge on the pick and that's just touching the strings and you can hear that really high frequency going on. If I use my fingers, it's kind of dull. Not that that's, that's actually quite a cool thing sometimes, but just to have that variety, you've got that also that hard edge going on. So that's the, some of the main reasons I like people to use a pick. Now the reason people don't use a plectrum or a pick it's, it's usually because they just don't know how to use one. You know, they've, they're given one, because I remember this, I was given a pick and I tried to play with it and I, I held it like a pen because I'd used, I was used to using a pen and uh, pencils and crayons and things like that, because I was pretty young. And, um, and I just found it really awkward to strum the guitar and to get the notes out of the guitar. It wasn't until I watched a few of my favorite guitar players really closely and realized that there, um, there was a technique to holding the pick. And that's what I'm going to help with you with today, is to help you play with really, really precise technique with the pick to allow all the uh, cool things that you can do with the pick to come out. So uh, let's get ready for that. Okay, so my first pick. When you're buying a pick or you're, um, you've got a whole bunch of picks to use, I recommend starting off with a pick that's really, really flexible. So uh, what I use is a very hard pick, but you can progress to getting onto that sort of style of a pick. But what I've got is a uh, basically a one millimeter pick. They're usually gauged on the thickness. So therefore you might get a 0.63 or a 0.66 or a 0.7, whatever. Um, that's just the, the, the thickness of the pick itself. And it usually determines the, the, the flexibility. I'd also recommend getting one that's quite nice to grip, as in it's easy to grip, it's not too slippery. 
because uh, the pick will move around a lot when you're first learning. Even with perfect technique, you'll still get a lot of movement going on. So that's what I recommend, just go out and grab a whole bunch of picks that are kind of nice and, and flexible and uh, got a bit of variety and uh, different textures and made of different materials. Doesn't really matter as long as you find one you're really comfortable with. Most people, when they do find that pick, it's their favourite pick and they don't want to um, they don't want to not use it anymore. Quick cool tip that I learnt just the other day from one of my students, believe it or not, was um, when you if you've got one of those the, the style of pick I'm using, which is a kind of a, a thick plastic slash nylon pick. Um, the best thing is like you'll find after a while they wear out and they become basically as blunt as the corner of the pick here instead of being nice and pointy. Um, you can actually rub that along the carpet and sharpen it using the carpet, believe it or not. Try it out, it's kind of cool. Uh, save you some money in buying picks all the time as well. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is how to hold a pick. So how do we hold a pick? I mean, normally when we pick up um, um, a plectrum or a pick and we usually try and play with it uh, like a pen, like I mentioned earlier, and that's really awkward. And you give an example of that, just pick up your, your plectrum now and, and pretend to write something. That's exactly how most people would pick up a pick and go to use it. And that's terrible for when we're playing guitar. It really is awful. And people just give up when they do that. They think, oh, this is just not for me. I've, I've given it a go. It doesn't sound any good. It doesn't feel any good. It's kind of awkward. I'd just rather use my fingers. And that's understandable too. So the way we hold a pick, first we're going to start off with uh, there's three things to remember. First thing is the thumb. Where do we put our thumb? Okay, holding up my pick here, the thumb is going to go along the pick. So it's going to poke out the other side. Hopefully you can see that. I've, I'm holding the pointy end. Your thumb is going to be in the, right in the centre of the pick, but the other most important thing about the thumb is it's going to overhang. It's going to overlap. What I mean by that, I'm going to pull it back now so it's just behind it. It's the tip of the, pit of the thumb. You can't see my thumb anymore. Here's another, another look at it. You can't see, the thumb has to go beyond the pick out here, so the thumb should be there. If you look on the other side, it'll be poking out the other side. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. The second thing, so that's the thumb. That's the first thing to check out. Second thing is your index finger is going to go on the, using the inside of your index finger. So we're not using the flat, fleshy part which we use to pick things up with. We're actually going to use the side of our finger, so between the nail and the fleshy part to sort of use the side of it pointing down the pick. So your thumb's on already, finger pointing down the pick. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. And then we just relax our finger, let it have a bit of curvature to it. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but somewhere just behind there and just uh, squeeze them together. Third thing that we're gonna uh, look at is what we do with the rest of our hand. And that is we're gonna do an A-OK -okay position. So it's as if we're going A-OK, -okay, everything's sweet, everything's cool. We're pretty much doing that with our hand and then relaxing it and letting it sort of nice and be nice and dangly. So those three things again, thumb across the pick, beyond the pick, in the centre as well, not too high, not too low so we can't pick anything, and finger pointing down. Finger, our fingers fanned out but relaxed and then have a go at playing that now. So let's have a look at how that looks on the guitar. First thing is we're going to just lie our hand down on the guitar. Just lie it down, let it be uh, nice and relaxed, fingers pointing down, and you'll, if you look down at your thumb, you'll notice that there should be a line between your thumb and your wrist and your elbow. There should be pretty much imaginary line going straight through there. The opposite of that would be as if your wrist was up in the air. So the best way to check that is simply by looking down and seeing where your wrist is. So if your wrist, if your fingers are on the guitar, your pick's touching a string, and your wrist is hovering just above the strings, you're spot on, you're right in the right spot. If your wrist is too high, just bring that down a little bit, and it shouldn't also, it shouldn't be resting on the strings. So it should be just in a relaxed position. Now from there, you should be able to swing your arm very gently from the, from the elbow, top to bottom, just doing them down strokes, and that should feel pretty comfortable. You should be able to get really close to those strings. Okay, and even, even just doing that, you might notice, oh, hey, hang on a minute, the pick's moving around, what do I do here? Just jimmy it round in your, in your hand, just shimmy it round until you get the position again. 
It's a bit like a, a dog getting trained. Uh, when you train a dog, you don't do, tr uh, train it once and it knows exactly what it's doing. You've got to have a go at this over and over again so that it becomes normal. And so you might be playing a little bit longer next time before you have to adjust your pick and then a little bit longer again. But unfortunately when you learn this to start off with, it's kind of unnatural and you need to sort of work with it a little bit until it does become natural. And when it does, it's such a cool thing because you're able to do so many things with it. Okay, let's try having a little bit more of a strum with that right hand again. We're going to do some upstrokes as well now. So we're going to do down. We're going to do a couple of downstrokes and a couple of upstrokes. Now upstrokes are just flicks. We're just going to flick the strings. Okay, we don't necessarily need to strum all the strings. We're just going to flick. And by the way, this is very gentle. When we're holding the pick, we're not gripping the pick tightly. Try to relax and just let the pick sit between the finger and the thumb. And if it's moving around too much, I would say, number one, check those three things, actually, check those three things. Number one being the thumb. If the thumb is in the perfect position, overlapping in the middle, go onto the finger. What's the finger doing? If sometimes people have a pointy finger like this and it becomes inverted. That's really uncool because it's too, too grippy. Relax, let it sort of curve around, let all the knuckles be slightly, and we'll have a bit of action going on there. Slight curvature to that. And the other thing is, have you got your hand fanned out, nice and relaxed, so that it just sits nicely? And do, and do you have your wrist low as well? Make sure your wrist is nice and low when strumming. So have some fun with that, and uh, we'll see how we go for the next video.